This is uh, management of endometrial cancer in the obese morbid patient. You can see we fight with the bowel to see clearly our operative field. We began the surgery by cutting the right round ligament and we opened the peritoneum lateral to the IP ligament to begin the pelvic lymphadenectomy. As you see, we open firstly the paravesical space. For that, we pull in the obliterate umbilical artery and by a movement of traction and contraction, our goal is firstly to reach the obturative nerve. The second step is the development of the pararectal fossa. For that, we have to identify the urethra. And as you see, we are in trouble with these bowels. And we try to open the space lateral to the urethra. Between the urethra and the internal iliac artery, which is the pararectal fossa. You can see the obliterate umbilical artery. Let's begin now our pelvic lymphadenectomy. And in the MRI, there is two suspicious metastatic lymph nodes on the external iliac artery. You can see the first suspicious node is dissected prudently and we will remove this mold using the 5 mm ligature sealing device. It's really important to uh, work slowly in the fatty patient to decrease the risk of uh, lymphatic hemorrhage and to decrease the risk of postoperative lymphocella, particularly if you have metastatic nodes. It's important as well to preserve the genitofemoral nerve. So this node is firstly removed. And we will place this node in the vesicomatrinal space. The second step is to pull in the external iliac artery that allows us to disconnect this artery from its psoas attachment. This maneuver allows us to remove later on all the lymphatic chain which is just below the external iliac vein. see slowly to show the lymphostasis and we can now remove all the lymphatic chain which is downward to the external iliac vein and we find the second suspicious metastatic nodes that was revealed on the MRI and as I say when you have suspicious nodes it's really important to ensure the hemostasis more than you want. You can see the nodes is between the external iliac vein and the obturative nerve. Sometime we have to switch to the bipolar to ensure the hemostasis. You can see we switch for the bipolar to ensure the because the sealing energy is not a good tool for the hemostasis when there is an active bleeding. So you can see we remove all the lymphatic chain and we put these nodes in the paravesical fossa. We will do the same on the opposite side and we don't show the procedure because it is exactly the same steps. We will show our technique for a total hysterectomy in the fatty patient. We will follow the Clermont-Ferrand technique. We will open a window below the IP ligament and we ensure that the 
was there this two centimeter before cutting this huge vascular element. The second step is to cut the posterior leaf of the raw ligament till we arrive on the upper part of the left uterus sacral ligament. At this level, take care not to enhance the deep uterine vein. You can see the uterine artery and you can see the deep uterine vein just the middle of this artery. Let's repeat the same on the left side. You can see how we are in trouble with this uh, bowel and you have to pull up every time this bowel because you have to work with the uh, 10 millimeter uh, pneumoperitoneum 10 millimeter mercury you can see the fatty bowel and we continue by sealing and cutting the right IP ligament. It's important to seal two centimeters to have a perfect hemostasis. Now we begin the basic vagina life section. It's important to follow the model that show you the right dissection of leg, particularly in this fatty patient. Let's cut now the left bladder pillar. And in my opinion, if you cut both bladder pillar, uh, you can pull down the bladder very easily. We cut the right bladder pillar. And we can, as you see, pull down the bladder with absolutely no You can see how this bladder is a fatty one. There is a lot of capillary, so it's important to work smoothly and as dry as possible. The vesicovatrinal dissection is done. Let's control now the left uterine pedicle. We use the 5 mm ligation sealing device and when we seal and cut the ischemic area, the left one, and now we seal the right one. So we have to remove the posterior leaf of the front ligament. Then we can now control the uterine artery at the ischemic level. See if you follow these simple rules, the procedure, even the patient with the very fatty one, is quite bloodless. We can now cut the left uterine pedicle and the uterus should be well vascularized, and we can do safely. Now we use a monocular needle and we cut the anterior aspect of the vagina and in the fatty patient we prefer to do the colpotomy with the ligation particularly of the lateral aspect of the vagina which is sometimes very vascular. You can see we cut lateral aspect of the vagina, the procedure is quite less. You can see how this bowel fall down on our operative field. We give the ligature to the assistant and we cut the posterior aspect of the And the job is done. Let's remove the uterus from the vagina leaf. 
let's remove the knots which are removed during the first step of the procedure during the pelvic lumbatectomy. We remove firstly the knots which are on the right and we remove For the fatty patient, I recommend to do a stitch on the planar peritoneum that allows us to pull up the entire planar to have a better view of the patria, as you see. Because the assistant must fight with the bowel and the surgeon must do the entire suturing by itself and I recommend in fatty patient to use the extra corporeal technique you win time and you are more secure because the assistant must pull every time the bowel up see how challenging is this kind of surgery in fatty patients, but the laparoscopic approach, in my opinion, is the best way to treat this kind of gynecological cancer. So this is our technique for doing uh, this uh, surgery. I hope this video was interesting for my colleague controlled the lymphostasis, hemostasis and thank you for your great attention and 